via these small little streets. And as you, I will show you the streets. It's very narrow, has a beautiful wall with all kinds of Delft blue pottery. You see, of course, you for the roads, the Neil Church, our father of the nation, William of Orange, of course, a mill. This point, you see that William of Orange was killed by Balthasar Gerards, a man from Belgium. The East Gate. The painter. And of course, the girl with the pearl earring. So all the oxes entered this street. And that's the reason that we have a Delft blue ox at this spot. Every year he gets some new ears because there is a lot of uh, vandalism here. So then the ox needs new ears again. So that's the Delft blue pottery. I continue walking over the bridge. A lot of bicycles, of course, in this part of the city, because Delft is a student city. We have 1100, uh, we have um, 100,000 people living in Delft and the sixth part of it are students, so around 16,000 students. We have just one university, but it's a very big one, and it's a technical university, one of the three technical universities we have. And every year there's a um, solar race with all kinds of solar cars, and Holland Delft is always participating, and sometimes we win that um, game. We are the first ones. Now the water level is under control. Eh? We have some um, machines regulating the water level. Good, we are at the meat house now. And this meat house is made by an architect called Hendrik de Keizer, the same one that made also the crypt of Wehrm of Orange and the town hall of Delft. So he was quite a famous uh, architect. You see the head of the cows and of some sheep. And the animals entered the cellar and you can, could buy your meat at the first floor of this house, of this meat house. And sometimes at the end of the day, they had some leftovers. Then they ring the bell. You see the small roof. Just below that roof, there was a bell. And everybody in the city could hear the um, sound of the bells. And they know, hey, now there's a special offer. So I can also go to the meat house and buy some meat. Now, of course, all the dogs hear the same noise, hear the same uh, bells ringing. So they also came here to pay a visit and to check the quality of the meat, of course. And later, when the identical situation improved, this uh, house became an auctions house for the eggs of chickens and later also a student society. A lot of students celebrated their parties over here. And still it is, it still was a student society here in this part. Now, one of the most popular houses to make pictures is this house with all kinds of curios on, old stuff. Now we are just behind the town hall. You see the prison tower again. And I walk together with you to the economical center of Delft because all the farmers came in the city with their boats full of products and they brought their products to the house with a big balance. And all the products were balanced over here and the farmers had to pay tax money for bringing the products into the city. It was all in this building. Of course, you cannot see it now very good because they are renovating it. And also in this area, there were a lot of market spaces. Market spaces so they could um, sell immediately the vegetables, the milk, the cheese, things like that. And at a certain moment, the city council 
said that they needed more market space. And that's the reason that they covered one of the kennels. I will show you. They covered the kennel over here. You can enter it from here. And just at the end of the street is the exit of the bridge. And down there, it's really dark. It's cool, especially today. And they used it as a fridge. They put all the butter over there before they um, sell it, before they were selling the, the butter at the markets. So it was like a fridge, a very long fridge, eight meters long. And that's the reason they call, we call this bridge the butter bridge. In, the, in Dutch language, Boterbrug. Now we walk to another point. You see a very big tree. It's a very old tree from 1885. But still it's healthy because it's a green one. It's the oldest tree in the Netherlands, uh, sorry, in the city of Delft. And we walk slowly, slowly to the other church because I told you that in the beginning the first church was the oldest church of the city. And that one has a very special tower. I will show you in a few moments. But first I would like to show you something else because all the restaurants in Delft, they don't have a lot of space to make restaurant, uh, to make a terrace. So that's the reason that many restaurants have a ship in the kennels like this place, for example. And also over there. And in that way, they can invite, they can welcome more clients than normally. And every year in the month of March, they bring the boats in the city. And in October, they put them out again. So we can start ice skating when there's enough ice. Another famous man was Anthony van Leeuwenhoek. He invented the microscope. And that's the reason that he was famous in the Netherlands for that reason. He had a big value for the medical society. Maybe you can see it. It's not because of your screen. But the tower of the old church is a bit, no, not really a bit, it's two meters out of balance. And there's a very easy reason. Because there was, in the beginning, there was no space to build a tower. Because we had a kennel over here. So they had to remove the kennel. So they... Um, had more space to make the tower of the church. Now you can see it better. You see that they made slowly, slowly a curve in the kennel. And at that empty spot, they put all kinds of clay in the skins of cows. And they started to construct the church tower. But of course, you know that clay will be more compact, will be smaller. And also the tower started to um, get out of balance. So they made some of the walls a little bit bigger, heavier to bring it to the other side. And they also play a game with your eyes because when you check the hour, the clock itself, you see a nine and a three and then a three. Next to the three and quite a big gray part and next to the nine, a smaller one. That's just for your eyes to bring it a little bit more in balanced position. We have a bell in this tower and that bell has a weight of 9,000 kilos. 
and a diameter of two and a half meters. So that's really a big one. And originally they swing um, the bell, but of course that's not really good for the tower itself. So now they say it's forbidden and they just put a hammer against it to give the sign of the whole hour and to another bell for the half hour. We have two exceptions. When we have day of national sadness, they ring the bell in the original way, or when one of the kings or queens died and will be buried in the new church, that's that location. Then of course, it's allowed to ring the bell in the official way. We also have um, in this kennel a boat to make a city tour by boat. And it's forbidden to park your cars here in this part. But we can see something else, something else that's quite special, and that's this small house, red colored, oxblad red colored. This used to be the house of one of the doctors of Delft, Pieter van Voreest. And Pieter van Vereest was also the doctor of one very special client, and that was our father of the nation, William of Orange. The doctor was a little bit afraid of his um, clients, of his patients, and that's the reason that he constructed two doors. One very nice door for himself and for our father of the nation, of course, and all the other clients were allowed to enter the door at the left-hand side. 75 square meters, including the upper part at this side, but quite expensive because every couple of years it's for sale. And then I check uh, the internet and last time the people had to pay half a million euros for this small house. But this is in Monopoly, Firms, the most expensive street. So we have a lot of famous people living here. For example, also the prince, one of the brothers of our king, Prince um, Friso. He studied at the Technical University in Delft, and he lived. Kevin, I guess street. that Kevin, I guess that my friend uh, Natalia. She is ashamed to tell you it's time to change and to have question to you because uh, uh, we will run out late. It was of just course. fantastic and thank you. And we will stay with you two hours, but we have other duties for this uh, social event. Therefore, I give back the floor to Natalia because I was not supposed to intervene here. No, of course not. Uh, thank you very much for the time for uh, showing you a little bit around here in uh, Delft. And I just keep on talking uh, till the moment you stop me. So um, no worries at all. Are there any questions? Uh, thank you very much, Kevin. It is Natalia again. So um, I think you cannot see the chat, but a lot of people say that you are a wonderful guide and you are, uh, you are giving us amazing tour. And I think uh, in a year, you will have a lot of uh, clients, and um, I think a lot of people will walk with you in Delft, if, if I write, if I spell correctly, this yeah. uh, name of the city. And uh, you know, I'm a photographer, and uh, I see a lot of places uh, which I will visit with my camera, and yeah, uh, I... I will be very happy to meet you there. Thank you very what? much. So you know, uh, you know our uh, big friend Adam um, uh, wanted to meet you in Delft, but uh, cannot go there. And I am give the floor to Adam now. And thank you again, Kevin. Have okay, a nice day. Stay with bye. us if you bye. want. See you next year. You. Bye bye. Thank you. Ciao. Hi everybody. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you very much, Kevin. Um, so I'm, I'm in The Hague at the moment. This is the background you can see. Um, and I hope we'll, uh, you know, fingers crossed that you'll all be able to come and visit. Delft is about 15 kilometers away from where I'm standing at the moment. Um, and it's a nice tram ride and it's uh, a beautiful city.
So I moved here a few weeks ago, so apologies if I don't know too much about The Hague, but it, as Kevin mentioned, it's the capital city of the Netherlands. So about half a million people, but because it's a capital and because it's also the center of many, for many international organizations, um, the international- uh, so, Sorry, with... sorry, it's Adam, it's not the capital. Amsterdam is the uh, capital. The oh, sorry, is the, the residence of the government. Right, the, the, royal, the royal capital. I think I missed off the, uh, the royal part. Is that correct, Martin? <laughs> The king for sure lives there. The but king, it's the anyway. residence. It's where the government the is and the capital is Amsterdam. Right. Um, which I just moved from. So I should have really known that. But it is the home of the International Court of Justice. It is the home of the Peace Palace where the court is located. Um, so it has, for its size, it's a, it's a wonderful city. It has facilities of all different kinds. Behind me is the Benenhof, which is the... I hope I get this right, the, the, the home of the, the Dutch Senate and the House of Representatives. The, let me see, it's a little bit bright, the Torrentre, which I don't pronounce very well. Martin, anytime, jump in with help. And you can see that little um, octagonal building. That is the office of the pr Prime Minister, Mark Rutte. And um, while the, 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 the United States has the Oval Office, uh, the Dutch Prime Minister has a very pretty octagonal office, and it's uh, somewhat older, uh, dates from about 1350. So behind me and again with the scaffolding is the Moritz House, which is um, where a lot of the paintings that Kevin mentioned are, are located. The Royal Collection is there. Vermeer's famous girl with a pearl earring. Rembrandt's Franz Hals, where, uh, where Kevin mentioned uh, portraiture, and Hals is famous for that. Um, we have a beautiful pond here with some of my favorite, I don't have an ICANN pet yet, but if I'm going to adopt anything, it would probably be a, be a coot. The coots are the little black ducks. Um, they're, they're quite antisocial actually, but I think they're quite fun to watch. Um, it's a wonderful city. If I turn around a little bit, and I hope that didn't make anybody feel a little sick, the park behind me, um, there's the Escher Museum. Um, and then if you walk up for about oh, five kilometers away, we have a beautiful beach. It's Schwenbenegen. <laughs> Again, Martin, jump in, jump in. Um, and I expect you'll be, you'll... Schwenbenegen. Thank you very much. I, I can say that it will be the location, fingers crossed, when we visit here, um, of many social events. So it's a small, lovely city. Um, it's historic. There's artwork and all kinds of things to see. The potential location, I don't want to get our hopes up. I think this, this last period has been one of getting hopes up and then having them dashed. So fingers crossed, the, the event um, next June would be held at the World Forum, about a two kilometer walk. Um, so a nice small city, very walkable, very good tram system, tram to Delft itself, 15 kilometers away. And looking forward to welcoming you here and i'm very sorry i'm not welcoming you welcoming you here at the moment so thank you very much everybody on with the social cheers thank you thank you very much adam thank you very much uh, martin so you uh, left your home today for us especially and um it's uh, great that uh, we enforce it you to walk uh, around the how good today for us and um, thank you very much adam you are putting uh, us in our dream to have a real face-to-face -face meeting in a year in heck thank you very much so Pleasure. the next part <laughs> thank you uh thank you very much and uh, the next part of our ural social event is a drawing lesson from me uh you know i think uh, each of us an artist even uh in Seoul, and I hope you uh, you are prepared and you already have a blue paint brushes or blue market or and plastic uh, paper or real porcelain plate on your table. And now uh, I am going to be your drawing teacher for the next ten minutes. We will draw together. Uh, I made a records for you and um, so we will see how I'm able to teach you and how 
I able to uh, draw <laughs> a great on the plate. So let's go with my records and see you in 10 minutes about. We are in Delft. In the 16th century, the city became a center of porcelain production. Delft porcelain is recognizable all over the world for its blue and white color and beautiful pastoral ornaments. The Delft masters were inspired by Chinese white and blue porcelain and technology was given by Italian masters. And over time, the masters in Holland found the technology of its production and their own special manner of hand painting dishes. Initially, the masters copied the shape of the dishes and their painting from Chinese samples. Ornaments and landscapes of China were in demand. In the future, potters began to produce glass, tile, vases, and dishes with stories from the Bible and landscapes of Holland, windmills, flowers nature, fishing boats and the coast. Today we will try to become masters of painting and we play, paint a plate in the style of porcelain from Delft. You know, my family wouldn't let me paint the white porcelain I have found at home. Therefore, I will use a round cardboard instead of a plate. You can do that. We'll need some blue paint. If you don't have any paint, use a blue marker or pencil. I will use my thin brush. We will draw patterns on our plate around the edges and leave the center free for a special mission. You can draw whatever you want. Flowers, birds, houses, windmills, ships, nature. Use all the images you love. Maybe you are inspired by people you know. Ok, draw people but they must be dressed as farmers or countrymen and country girls. There is a rule, you know. I'll start with the bot. I imagine the bot like this. There will be no fishermen in it. All the fishermen are at the ICANN 71 policy meeting, I think. Hmm, what else? You know, girls like flowers so much. Then I will draw the flowers. It will be a hortensia, if you couldn't recognize it. Now I am going to draw a windmill. I have seen a lot of them in Holland. I think it is a popular motif. But you can draw whatever you want. We will fill the plate with different patterns. Strange flower again, maybe. I think it will be good to add a horse. Now we can support the I Can Pets campaign in social media. Maybe you can draw a cat, a goose, a dog. Also great. 
the horse sorry your legs look not so good i see Now let's add an ornament around the plate, so be free in your fantasy. Unfortunately my fantasy is a little bit poor today. <laughs> And now the most important thing, in the center we will place the lettering I can 71, an event which takes place virtually in the Netherlands and which brought us all together not only to discuss the I can policy but also to enjoy our time together as always. My dear friends, hi! I feel like I have to express my great fantastic emotion. You know, it was my first Delft style plate which I made with you. And I never, really never thought that one day I would give an online lesson to you, to many, many people and my friends around the world. It's fantastic, it's my happiness. And I am sure your plates or your dishes which you made with me look like a real pieces of art. Could I ask you to show them to me and to us, to our community? I kindly ask you to put the picture of your work on your social media and use this hashtag. It will be a great gift for me and for this moment my big interest. By the way, one secret for you. The price of porcelain made in the famous Royal Dell factory is quite high. If you suddenly decide to sell your work today, you can start a big business. See you, my dear artists. Thank you very much for being with me and you allow me to be your teacher. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of talented, um, talented artists uh, in our ranks we have. And, um, you know, uh, if you can show me the result of your work, you can do that right now. Or if you will be ready to show us the result of your drawing uh, time with me, you can put the picture uh, on your social media with our hashtag and <clears throat> I think we will please all people with our uh, uh, art. And uh, now we can go, <laughs> Sebastian, nice. So I need to show maybe all of you now. Wow, a lot of plates. Thank you very much, my lovely friends. <gasps> But Martin, I see without plate. So bad little without plate. Aha, <laughs> uh, uh -huh, it's better. Okay. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, I will ask you to show me uh, it, take uh, it with you or we, when we will uh, gather our things. Great, Judith. To the next face-to-face -face meeting. Thank you very much. So I think now uh, we can go to the next part of our URAL social event. And now I, I would like to ask you, uh, do you like a gems or maybe do you miss gems? Uh, yeah. I, I see Cheryl. <laughs> yeah. So I do a lot. And um, you know, the last uh, very cool performance uh, of James and uh, our dancing, I remember it from the Berlin from IGF 2019. And uh, now I would like to give the floor to Olivier Crippin Leblon. Olivier is the owner of the James label, and he knows a lot about the story of James. Uh, and uh, Olivia, we are waiting for you um, uh, in our studio now. Mike is yours. Thank you very much, Natalia. And uh, it's uh, it's uh, Olivier speaking. Yes, supposedly. Um, right. So welcome everyone to the Gems, the Global Equal Multi Stakeholder Band. I was going to say a few words about how it all started, and indeed, it was an interesting start back in. 2008, uh, Sebastian Bachelet and Roberto Gaetano, two people that are here with us today, uh, thought about having a musical night taking place at the Paris meeting. And unfortunately, the CEO at the time and ICANN legal thought, wait a minute, it's way too complicated. We can't have that. A few years later, the next CEO, who was an avid musician, decided that he would be able to uh, proceed forward with having uh, a music night taking place. And that was organized and several music nights took place over time and became larger and larger. And people like Janice Duma uh, Lang, uh, other, otherwise known as Mama J to some people with the fellowship uh, were uh, keen, keen uh, um, uh, participants, should we say, not sure, dancing, singing, etc. The whole community met. And, and was dancing and singing for a number of years. And this all continued until the meeting that took place in Los Angeles, uh, where it became a bit of a problem because it was getting bigger and bigger. It was happening at an ICANN venue and there uh, was a bit less interest. There was a professional band that would play. The feeling just wasn't there anymore. At the Dublin meeting, and now we're we're looking at the uh, the calendar here. So one of the T-shirts, the Gems T-shirts, and I have to be very careful for this to come up. Here we go. The Gems T-shirt has the the calendar when there was a Gems revival, and that's back in uh, in 2015 in Dublin. The Ferryman Pub was opposite the venue. Well, in fact, the whole venue was surrounded by pubs, but the Ferryman was the closest one. And in the basement of the Ferryman were a few instruments. And we ended up having a small number of people, including Brian Cute, leading a number of people into some karaoke session, which involved drinking a lot of uh, beer and whatever other beverages came to mind at the time. And that was the, the first New Gems uh, re revival as such, with all of the old people that had started the original Gems back uh, in, uh, uh, you know, in the early days before that, uh, being all crunched into this little basement. It was quite an interesting time uh, back then. We thought, this is so great, let's continue. And so the Marrakesh meeting, the Asian Bay Palmeray was the venue, uh, an outdoors venue with a nice uh, setting, uh, barbecue outside, music inside. I think many of you will remember this one where it was extremely hot in there. Uh, the band started their drinking spree and never stopped drinking since. Um, in Helsinki, uh, we had the Villa Kivi, which was just up, well, not very far from the venue. And my big concern at the time was knowing that everyone was going to drink like nothing else. Since again, it was the, the summer, we were talking about June 2016. I thought, oh dear, this place looks like it's going to be torn apart. Not a single glass was broken, not a single piece of damage. Everyone was so incredibly respectful of the place. It was Amazing. Although we did see a couple of people taking their shirt off while they were dancing. A bit bizarre. Some of you will remember this scene. In Hyderabad, uh, over in India, we um, decided to go a bit bigger and we went to Block 22, a nightclub that was just down the road from the venue. And Block 22 was um, 
Yeah, it was interesting because it was too far to get to by by walking. So people had to take uh, either a bus or taxis going back and forth. Thankfully, taxis in India and uh, and Ubers in India are very cheap. And we remember we, we had several people in the team uh, who were constantly ordering Ubers. I think we had nearly 100 Ubers or ordered over the evening to get people back home because most people were indeed unable to walk when they left the venue. Great night indeed. In Copenhagen, Copenhagen, we went to a place called Soho, slightly smaller. Uh, again, the whole place was completely drunk dry and the music was just incredible. Uh, Roberto met um, a, uh, a saxophone uh, from, is it the 1915 or something and didn't want to let it go. Um, that was the saxophone he was, you know, he said, this is the reason why I can should invest in equipment such as this saxophone, and we have the video to prove it. Maybe in a future uh, Uralo uh, uh, session. In Johannesburg, uh, we had the first uh, go into a hard rock cafe, moving to the next level. Um, at the end of the night, the staff came to me and, and told me there is one beer that is left and it's yours. Everything had been drunk in the place. They, they, I mean, they'd never seen something like this. The guy who was the, the music uh, um, producing guy, uh, you know, there said, this is the wildest I've ever seen this place go to. Um, it is also the most bizarre band I've ever seen uh, in my life. But there you go. In Abu Dhabi, uh, the Aloft Roof Garden was uh, another amazing venue on the, on the roof of one of the hotels. We were tabling for about 200 people to, to come. Uh, we had a riot at the entrance, uh, 600 people, more than 600 people made it there. I was actually having an important ALAC meeting uh, before that, and I kept on receiving calls on the mobile telling me, you have to come up, <laughs> the police is about to turn up. So yeah, it, great night again. In Abu Dhabi, so in San Juan, Hermanos Rivera, now of course um, in, in San Juan, had uh, Puerto Rico had this whole uh, hurricane that took place that destroyed the facilities. The band managed to trip the electricity. I don't know how many times we had it to reconfigure the concert halfway in the night because the, the whole system would reset constantly. And the uh, we couldn't have air conditioning. Again, an exceedingly hot night. But we did manage to sell these. I hope you can see it. I can put it here. These Gems for Puerto Rico t-shirts and we, we made a lot of money that we gave to a, a local, uh, local place that uh, was rebuilding houses. We also had some t-shirt left. And in fact, I think now in Puerto Rico, there's a few hundred people walking around with a GEMS t-shirt. Um, some members of at large living in Puerto Rico will probably be able to tell us about this. After that, it all went uh, pretty crazy. Uh, we had another hard rock cafe uh, meeting, uh, meeting, uh, 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 the whole thing, craziness, crazy night in Panama City. And of course, we had always the two sides, the early part of the evening that was uh, jazz and the later part that went into rock and roll. In Barcelona, Hard Rock Cafe again. By now, the Hard Rock Cafe franchises uh, network started and knowing us. It became easier to get hold of uh, uh, places like Hard Rock Cafe. Kermusa at Palmeray in Marrakesh because the original place was too small. We had a great local band that was playing um, and it was, uh, it was good fun to see that. I don't know if we, are we going through the, uh, the slides, not the slides, but the, the Facebook page because there's a Facebook page that one can go through and, and see some of the pictures from these great places. Uh, and you know, fusion between the local band and the, uh, the Gems band was just incredible. In Montreal, Pub Saint Paul was another place we nearly tore apart. And then uh, there was a, a gems night that took place outside the ICANN meeting, and that's the IGF at the SQL Convention Hall, where the German hosts went absolutely crazy and provided a multi-level stage with cameras, with things and whatever. And uh, you know, we went into the next level of, um, of, uh, of craziness. In Cancun, we were going to have the Hard Rock Cafe again. And unfortunately, the whole pandem pandemic struck. I was about to sign on the day when it was announced that the ICANN meeting was, uh, was canceled. And it was such a disappointment to have to cancel this because the venue again was really incredible. And um, would you believe it? We also had a venue ready with the Polish hosts for the forthcoming IGF uh, right in the middle of the, of the compound, a huge nightclub 
uh, and we were going to have another gems over there. And again, this is being pushed back and we have no idea whether this year would be or would not be possible. But gems will survive. And in the meantime, we've managed to get a few gems members to actually do a, well, an online concert. And um, I think that uh, this is what we are all waiting for. Um, I hope that this will be uh, one of many online concerts that will take place alongside real face-to-face -face concerts. And I'm sure that all of the people in the Gems Band would be so looking forward to play again together. We're all missing this so incredibly much. So I'm not sure what to do now for the concert to come through or uh, Natalia, I guess you probably know better than I do. It's going to happen. Harder, better and stronger.
Fantastic. I hope that you've enjoyed this. And I can see one of the musicians, Roberto, has put his hand up. Maybe Roberto would like to have a word. Yes. Um, thank you, Olivier. This is, um, this is uh, Roberto speaking. Um, just a couple of, um, um, of comments. Uh, um, well, one was um, related to the, uh, the very first um, uh, attempt that failed. Uh, um, with uh, Sebastian um, um, trying to, um, with myself, trying to organize it. And I wanted just to mention that it would, um, to us, uh, it, it was going to be the perfect uh, uh, occasion because uh, uh, we were planning that for the 21st uh, uh, of June. Uh, that was at that time, uh, the music day for France. It then eventually became the music day for Europe, but that was uh, not yet the case. And we thought that being in Paris, that would have been an excellent way to, to bring that into ICANN. Unfortunately, uh, the bureaucracy is, um, is uh, stronger than, uh, um, than uh, um, some um, um, efforts. Um, talking about bureaucracy, um, Yes, bureaucracy is strong, but this time we beat uh, the bureaucracy. We had prepared um, um, uh, songs. We, we, we worked on that. We were playing um, uh, Satin Doll of Duke Ellington. And uh, um, now, um, 24 hours before <laughs> the event actually was a little bit more, to be fair, 36 hours uh, uh, before the event, we get the notice that uh, for legal reasons, we cannot play copyrighted music on Zoom. So that was the panic. And, um, um, and I went to sleep and I, and I could hardly uh, sleep. And then uh, at five in the morning, I had the solution. Let's write down an original tune. Let's call it uh, Gems. And let's play this and distribute uh, the, um, uh, the music and uh, figure that out. We had 24 hours to do it, and apparently we did. So this is uh, um, an uh, original tune of the James uh, uh, band, and it's probably the first of many, because if this, um, if this way of uh, doing things works, uh, then, uh, then we can continue. Um, we are going to talk to the um, IP constituency for uh, having all our uh, GEMS material copyrighted and be allowed uh, to be played forever at uh, ICANN meetings without uh, any problem. That uh, concludes what I wanted to say. And um, great work from uh, um, Irio at, uh, at the piano and um, uh, also Chris was responsible for the synchronization. I saw in the chat, this is uh, unfortunately not a live performance. Each of us recorded uh, its own uh, um, track based on an agreed basis. And then Chris combined uh, everything, video and, uh, and audio. Uh, unfortunately, we had to do without uh, uh, drums, so we used uh, a recorded track for for drums. Um, but um, yeah, well, I I hope you you liked it, and that's uh, all what I wanted to do. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto. And before I hand the floor back to Natalia, I should just add that so far the performances were uh, well, the the whole music night and the gems were. Uh, sponsored by Affilius, and now with the changes in uh, the whole uh, uh, landscape, we are looking for a sponsor. So if anybody feels like they have some uh, deep pockets, then uh, yeah, please uh, sponsor Gems, because Gems only wants to do one thing, and that's to play. Back to you, Natalia. Uh, thank you very much, Olivia. Just um, one comment from me. So it was amazing idea of James. I'm a little bit uh, used for ICANN community, and I didn't uh, uh, I didn't know anything about the story of James. Thank you very much, and um, 
we all understand how it was uh, difficult to syn synchronize the music. Thank you very much, Roberto, Chris, Yurio. You are very talented, amazing guys. Uh, so we'll uh, look forward to uh, hear you on the stage uh, next face-to-face -face meeting. So the, this is the time for a short, funny game about top-level domains. So back to you, Olivia. Well, well, well. Okay, so we're all ready to play in this uh, top-level domain game, ladies and gentlemen. And what we have here are a number of top level domain names that are given on the screen. Now, the way this is going to work is we're going to have a poll that will poll you um, with batches of names at a time. And you'll have to note uh, which ones are top level domains and which ones are not. We're obviously not going to give you enough time for you to go quickly and log into the website and start doing searches and stuff like that. So you're going to have to know this by heart which should be pretty straightforward as we have so many experts here and um you know just the time that we're giving you now to look at these is is enough for you to make up your mind so we hope that you will get all of the questions right um but uh we'll see we'll see um if it works or if it doesn't it's a first one for us i must admit i don't know the answers myself which is great so I have no idea whether ABC, dot ABC is a domain name or not, or dot Paris or dot Romer or dot Christmas or dot dating or dot duck or dot monster or whatever else there is on there. So that's how it goes. We'll have the, I think the, the way that it goes is we'll have the poll coming out and then we'll batch it. So each one will be a batch and you have to choose which ones um, are, are, are on there. Um, I hope that I'm quite clear on this. Is that, uh, Natalia, is there anything that I should point out? Nothing to add from my side. So let's go with this game. Thank you, Olivia. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, let me just caress my beard. Let's get going. Okay, I'll go ahead and start the poll. One moment. This is the first. There are going to be five questions. And which top level domain does not exist? Please go ahead and vote now. And I'll oh, let you know. ABC, dot band, dot beer, dot Bible, dot bike, dot blue, dot Broadway, dot Christmas, dot cry, or dot click. They're 10 per poll. So just make sure you scroll. Thank and you. They are alphabetical. So that should be darn easy. Okay, I'm just waiting for another moment to allow everyone to vote. I'll close the poll in about 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds. Now I'm in touch with the ICANN tech department and they're telling me there is a real denial of service attack happening on the ICANN servers at this very moment with hundreds of people trying to download information about the, the new DTLD website. Very bizarre. Martin, you're going to have to do something about this, maybe. I don't know. They, they might call you. I think we can go to the next question. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. Okay. We're in this together, Olivier. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, I wish everyone was uh, dressing up like I do. <laughs> Would you like me to share the results for each one? For each, no, each... well, can we do that at the end? Mm, I believe so. Okay, one moment here. Yes. Okay, we'll go to poll number two. Okay, second question. Which domain, top level domain does not exist? Please does go not ahead. Dot clothing, dot coffee, dot compare dot cricket dot crown dot cherry dot dance dot dating dot diamonds and dot diet hmm.
Hmm. Good to see I one of us is entirely from seeing with. himself. Yeah. <laughs> I seriously can't, can't stop laughing with this whole look you've got there, I see. I really cannot. It's just, you're cracking me up totally. <laughs> I am being serious. Don't make fun, please. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. I like Sebastian's better. <laughs> All right, on to the third question. And which top level domain does not exist? Please go ahead and vote. Uh, dot duck, dot email, dot family, dot fire, dot garden, dot meat, dot men, dot meow, dot mini. Dot mum. All right, about 10 more seconds and I'll close the poll. I'm trying to find my better side. Is it this side? Yeah. All right, closing the poll. One moment. On to the fourth. Which top level domain does not exist? Dot monster, dot ninja, dot off, dot pink, dot seven, dot shoes, dot she, dot unicorn, dot vodka, dot WTF. I'll close the poll in about 10 seconds. All right, one moment. I'm closing the poll and stand by. And our final. Question. And here we have dot Alsace, dot Amsterdam, dot Berlin, dot Budapest, dot Colonia, dot Hamburg, dot Helsinki, dot Moscow, dot Paris, and dot Roma. You might notice they're all locations. Hmm. Which ones does not exist? Well, which top level domain does not exist? The locations, of course, do exist, hopefully. Hmm. I can see a lot of very baffled faces at the moment, thinking, which one is it? Hmm. All right, I'm going to close the poll in about five more seconds. Okay, I'm ending the poll. And yes, some people are doing this at 3.30 in the morning. Excellent. Dedication. Okay. It's the perfect thing to do at 3.30 in the morning. Okay. <laughs> Rock on. Well, I can think of any number of other things that I'd be rather doing, but this one's making me smile. 
<laughs> okay. Go ahead and share the results for each question. Okay. Right, yeah, and let's find out which ones are the ones that don't exist. Okay, one moment here. Okay, so this is for question one. And looks like the highest amount was dot cry, 18 people, 46%. And that is correct. Yeah, well done to all those people, but it is only half the community knows. But that's pretty impressive. Not bad. Okay. All right. Second. Right. Second question. Results. And Ooh. the one that does not exist is dot cherry. Wow, so only 20% of people knew that this was the one that didn't exist. I'm not quite sure why people did not like dot compare, but it seems to be that it's a, it's a favorite. So there you go, dot okay. cherry. Okay, and the third one, looks like the highest amount was dot meow, 13 people, 34%, which is correct. We can't see it at the moment. I don't know, has it? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. There we go. Sorry, sorry about that. 34% said dot meow. Some people said dot email or dot duck. Dot meow does not exist, but it looks like some people do like it. All right. Fourth one. The highest amount was dot off, but the correct answer is dot she with 17%. Wow. Shame on you at large. Just have no clue about new GTLDs. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. And our final one. Fifty-four percent voted for. I might pronounce this wrong. Dot Alsace. 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 Oh, jeez. Okay. Apologies. Well, the correct answer is dot Roma. And I think that Sebastian might have to say something about this because obviously Alsace is not that far from where he is, mm -hmm. but it seems to be absolutely outrageous. You, you're about to launch a war here with 54% thinking dot Alsace does not exist. Goodness. Yeah, but it's Sebastian, but in the same time, I it was a little bit tricky here because uh, it's a region in France and not the city and people may have uh, considered that it was a trick, but not the trick was one of the capital of Europe who is not yet with a extension. And it was, it is the trauma we don't have. Uh, and, and, but it will come one day, and but it's interesting that you know that that Amsterdam, that Berlin, that Hamburg, that Helsinki, but even that Paris, there are a few people who don't know. Now, the Pays de Breton, uh, it's not uh, Alsace, it's that BZH, BZH. Thank you, Olivier, for running that. Back to you. Thank you, Sebastian. And I'm going to hand the floor back to Natalia. Yeah. <laughs> So it was so cool, Olivier. So I'd like to say that you look uh, very cool and um, this is a great deep purple uh, new image of you. And I hope to see uh, something similar in our next face-to-face -face meeting, uh, maybe during ICANN meeting. And uh, thank you very much for this game, for this mood. And I really surprised it of fantasy of top level domain. Uh, names, registrars, and knowledge of our attendees today. And you know, uh, dot meow, dot cherry, it was my ideas. <laughs> so, uh, that is the uh, final of our event, unfortunately. But uh, we would like to give you um, 
I, I know uh, five or maybe six minutes of uh, gems memories from different uh, gems parties during ICANN meetings in the past. And uh, so go ahead with this record. Recording stopped.